Oh, hi. So here's this week's piece. It is kind of like a mini armoire. It has the brackets there for the rod to go across the top. It doesn't have that, and I'm not going to put one in because it has uh, three different shelves inside that are adjustable. So that's how I'm going to be selling this guy out. It was quite a bit dirty. There was like large debris <laughs> inside, which I thought was just amusing. So I actually gave this piece a good clean with some TSP. I don't always use TSP, but this one just kind of seemed like it needed it. So scrubbed it down with that and then rinsed it all off. And since this is a fall, kind of like pumpkin spice colored inspired cabinet, I thought, you know, we got to start out with some browns. This color is deep melon. Then we will go into obviously pumpkin orange. And then I've got medium khaki and dark khaki to finish it off. And this is just my base blend. So whenever you're working on something, I knew that I wanted to start those colors. I knew that I wanted the top to kind of have more of like the cafe latte type coloring, but the bottom could be a little more vibrant. That way not the entire piece was because too much brightness, it makes me nervous. So I just kept this um, brightness really down at the bottom and then kind of let it lighten up going up to the top. So these blends at the bottoms are the harder blends to do because you're doing such dramatic colors, but up at the top, they're super easy. You're just going back and forth between the two colors that are so similar anyways, that it's just, it's a cakewalk to blend those colors. So if you're just starting out, try and find colors that are just really close and they'll just blend super, super easily. So you can see I'm not too careful on my first coat. It's just the base coat. You can change things up on your second to kind of give you an idea of what you want. If you don't like something on your first coat, you can go back on your second and change it. It's kind of the beauty of things. It kind of gives you an idea where you want to be. And if you hate it, you can change it. These drawers were super easy. They were mostly the pumpkin orange color. And then just at the very, very bottom, it was kind of like a mix of the deep melon and the pumpkin. So this wasn't a hard blend to do either. I kind of make try and make things easy for me in that way. The bottom drawer would have been the most difficult if I had to say something was difficult about this, just because I'm blending three pretty intense colors into each other. So the pumpkin orange to the deep melon. Again, you're just going back and forth, but they're pretty similar in tone that it wasn't too terrible. But the Woodland Harbor and the deep melon, that one I had to work with a little bit. And you'll see what I do between the two colors as I get them laid down. And then I will start swirling them up into each other. So it's pulling the brown up into the deep melon and the deep melon down into the brown. And then I can brush back and forth vertically to smooth it out and to get a cleaner transition. And you'll see that coming up here. You can also see me using my mister bottle. Use it. If you need to, if your paint starts sticking or doing anything you don't like, you can add a little bit of water and it will just smooth things out and make it quite a bit more dreamy to work with. And everything you're seeing me do on these drawers here is the exact same thing I did on the sides going up the piece. And I've mentioned this before, but I like to give myself stopping points and colors that aren't transitions so that it's easier for me. So like the feet at the bottom of this are kind of a pain to paint because they're at the very base. So those were fully Woodland Harbor. There's no blend on those. And then, like I said, the second drawer is mostly pumpkin. So there's next to no blend on that. I try and give myself a little bit of grace in those, you know, areas that I don't want to deal with because there's a break point between those two middle drawers in, in the middle of them and I didn't want to have to blend through there. So I didn't make myself. So here I'm adding just a little bit of interest because I want this to be kind of a little bit messy, kind of like sprinkles on top of a, a coffee. So I'm taking the Woodland Harbor and I'm just hitting it against the ridges on the drawer fronts to make those pop. And I'll do this with the whole thing, except for up here I'm using the pumpkin instead of the Woodland Harbor. So I'm bringing the orange up to the top, 
and kind of the browns into the orange and just doing it everywhere. So this is probably my most favorite part. I am throwing my satin poly on here and I'm adding this amazing owl picture. Oh my gosh, I love it. This guy does some awesome, awesome work. I'll have him, his name and everything down below. I've done one other of his images. It was uh, Raven and it was just, oh, I loved it. But so I found this owl and I just thought, what goes better with fall? I suppose I could have done a fox. We're not doing foxes. This is an owl piece. Um, so anyways, I just laid down my poly. This is incredibly, incredibly thin tissue paper. If you are not comfortable with that, get thicker tissue paper or do the newsprint paper. Um, as you can see, I was just very delicate putting it on. So there's a few bubbles, but as I take my brush with the poly over the top of it, it smooths them out and kind of lays it down flat. So I feel like I'm just never too finicky about decoupage anymore. So while that's drying, I'm going to be doing some stenciling on the drawer fronts with some gold because you know, you have to gold. It just seemed like the perfect color for it. And this is a Jamie Ray vintage stencil. It's pretty grand. So I'll link that as well. And if you haven't seen my other videos about this, this one's a little bit different, but they're all kind of the same if you've ever worked with blending in tissue paper. So I am just looking at the print and I can see that there's darker and lighter variations in the papers. So I'm starting off to the side, trying to get the variations in. And I just kind of use my piece as a palette. I don't mix separate colors on something else. I mix everything directly on my piece and let it work into the painting that's already there. So I'm not afraid of getting my brushes dirty. I'm not afraid of mixing paint. I'm not afraid of any of that. If that's something that you don't like, have extra clean brushes on hand and you can depot all your paint. That's totally fine. If that's something that, you know, gives you an eye twitch, do that. But I don't care. I, it's very, very minimal, if any, paint transfer between things. And I mean, I feel like it just kind of helps things blend out together when you use the same brushes back and forth. And you can always wipe them off. And I will occasionally wipe them off on a clean cloth. And so again, back to first coat information, your first coat is never going to be perfect. If it is, you're, you're well ahead, ahead of me. Um, my first coat is helping me figure out and understand what colors need to go where and how I need to blend the paint out and everything like that. So this first coat, you're just like, oh, this is a mess. I'm doing this all wrong. This is not going to look good. You just power through that. You power through all those feelings and then eventually you're like, oh, okay. See what you did there. Good job, paint. And you also have to know that the paint is going to dry a slightly different color than what it is wet. So keep that in mind, depending on the paint that you're using. I always use chalk mountain paint, so I, and I'm very familiar with it, so I know how it dries. Um, if you use a different kind of paint or a paint that you're very familiar with, you'll kind of get a feel for it and know what you need to do with your paint. So this bottom section is actually really fun because it doesn't have to match the papers. All it has to do is kind of have the same feel as the paper and it will kind of blend in nicely because I have this huge blank space down below that I have nothing to reference it because it's obviously wouldn't be as high up in the sky or it wouldn't be, you know, the angle wouldn't have been something that I could figure out what was below them. So I just kind of played with it and I was like, yeah, yeah, let's do some extra orange here. And again, this, this does look crazy. I understand. It'll get better. Just trust the process. Isn't that what I have a few of you saying? <laughs> that you just watch and you just say, trust the process, trust the tr process. I really appreciate you guys saying that because it's essentially what you're doing the whole time. You're just like, ah, I really hope this turns out. But it does. It's grand. Everything is, everything's grand.
You can see the little signature on there. I don't feel comfortable covering that up. That's somebody else's art and I don't want to take that away from them. So I will leave that if it's ever on one of my prints. I just feel like that's, that's the right thing to do. As you can see now, I'm starting to bring the paint more over into the picture to kind of blend things in. And because this was sealed, when I first laid down this picture with the poly on it, I let it cure overnight before I started in on the paint with it. That way, if I get anything anywhere on the image that I don't like, I can actually wipe it back. And you can see it's finally starting to like come together and look very, very cohesive. Oh, I just love it so much. And next we're going to work on that huge blank space that we have over on the right side. So I mixed up a color that I thought would potentially be decent enough to be these branches. And my colors are not as kind of subdued as the colors on the print. I watered them down as much as I could without them getting too kind of drippy. So I'm just working with what I have and that's what we're doing here. So to do these branches, I kind of twist the brush and move it a little bit as I go to kind of give them the little knots and everything in them. I'm doing it very softly, kind of letting the brush do the work for me. Let's keep in mind, I'm not any kind of artist. I mean, I paint furniture, but I don't paint things, I, items. I, I, don't, I don't paint scenes, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So this is incredibly out of my comfort zone, but I think it's good to try new things and I'm not terribly unhappy with how this turned out, so hooray. As you can see, I'm going over the part of the print that's already kind of there, and I'm going over the top of that with my paint to make it kind of look more cohesive as I bring it over into the side that isn't actually decoupage paper. So it helped a little bit. I'm obviously not going to go over the entirety of the left side, but here I just took a slightly darker shade, and I'm going underneath all the branches and adding in shadow because that's what the original artist did on his so I'm just mimicking everything that he did and adding that in under where obviously no light would hit and these flowers are really really easy to do they're just five petaled flowers and you can kind of be a little bit messy on this because they're then outlined in a soft gray color and the outline really is your best friend and kind of conceals anything that you messed up on and you can kind of use it to move things around a little bit. I mean, not a lot, but it does help quite a bit. So I'm just placing these sporadically where I think they would potentially look good. Kind of keeping in mind what the original artist did and 
going off of that. This was really hard for me. This was like, I think the hardest part was trying to figure out how many flowers I should do and where I should put them. But you can kind of see they just look a little bit like blobs now. So now I've taken a smaller detail brush and a gray and I'm just outlining all of the flowers doing the same outline that is already on the other flowers and adding stems in to the little buds that are sticking off so they don't just look like floating specks in my night sky. And then each of the flowers also have like these little teeny tiny dots in them so I'm adding those in as well. And then I'll go ahead and throw in some extra leaves. The leaves were also really hard for me because there was no real shape to kind of run them with. Like the flowers were all of a very similar shape, but the leaves were all kinds of cattywampus. So that was actually hard for me to draw in the leaves because I felt like I had to be kind of random with it and it uh, was just, it was hard, but we prevailed. You can see me tapping things with my fingers. Anytime I wanted something lightened up, I just used my finger for that. I use my fingers in painting quite a bit. I feel like they're the tools that you always have on hand. Ah, ah, ah. And then once I finish all the leaves, I will go back in with the darker shade again and kind of shade in some of the leaves a little more on the bottom of the branches where I deem necessary and just added a few kind of like veins in the leaves because on some of his leaves they had them and some of them they didn't. It was just kind of all over the place. Now to seal everything in, I'm using my dark antiquing wax. This is just a dark brown wax. It's going to seal everything in. And bonus, it really helps with the blend. So if you are a beginning blender, this is a great way to kind of bring your blending together because it's a darker shade. Anytime you're adding layers over the top of a blend, I feel like it helps it kind of marry a little bit better together. So this whole piece getting dark wax and then I will let it sit, penetrate, fully and then go back and wipe it off. And all this is doing is really kind of toning down all the bright colors. I really wanted everything to just kind of be brought back a, a smidge. And now I feel like it, you know, has more of a fall vibe. Not that it didn't already, but now it's like super fall. And we're gonna bring it up a notch because now, since there's that dark wax stuck in those crevices, I'm going to add my glazing dust in dark brown and add this with a stiff brush. And I'm running along all of the creases around the entire piece. I'm just showing you these drawers. I did it to all of the little crevices everywhere and kind of shaded out the corners on everything. Because that wax is there, the glazing dust sticks to that and oh, it's awesome. It's good stuff. So this glazing dust is the same stuff that I use to add into my poly. You can use it to make a glaze, hence glazing dust, but I typically use it for, you know, gilding things as well. So it's very multi-purpose stuff. But yeah, so you do this, it's sitting in wax. If you want to bring any of it back because you think you got too much, you can take your rag that already has wax on it and it will just wipe 
back and you can dilute it a little bit. I mean, you just play with it. It's really easy. And then it will harden up in the wax like the wax does to fully seal your piece. Um, once this wax and everything sits overnight, I will go back over it with a cloth and just kind of polish it up and make sure there's no excess wax anywhere. And then on one of my journeys through the land of Amazon, I found this incredible peel and stick wallpaper and I obviously had to use it for this. So I just did the back and then I covered the shelves. The shelves were a bit kind of messy. I cleaned them, but it wasn't enough. So putting this stuff on there. Oh, hi, Taryn here. And I've got all the fall vibes. Just kidding. Uh, I live in Portland. It's essentially fall here like 98% of the time we get like three weeks of summer and then back to fall and then we have a smidge of winter so uh here is the fall inspired cabinet um it is a blend from brown to orange to you know like cafe it's like a pumpkin spice latte cabinet with super fun things on the inside i hope you guys enjoy this um thank you so much i this is going to be out after this because I'm getting ready to take a trip down to California to see my family, but I just broke 3,000 and I just, oh, thank you guys so much. That's super awesome. I'm so thankful. Uh, yeah, let's uh, get into some pictures.